It's become clear to me over the last few months that many of these big time studios that used to bring us some of the greatest titles that we've known in the gaming industry have begun to fall off recently in the most epic ways imaginable. While a good chunk of their increasing failure can be explained away by poor development or poor marketing or poor communication skills with their own customer base, another large chunk of this has to do with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is an aspect of Dragon Age the Veilguard that has been expressly criticized by not only fans of the game franchise, but people outside the franchise trying to push for normal, fun video games being made again. You see, a big problem in this industry right now is many of these big studio heads ignoring what the customers say. They ignore any feedback that they get, and sometimes when they get this feedback, they lash out at the very people trying to express it. And more often than not, these responses are embedded in anger and hatred. And what I just described is what we have to look forward to in today's story because I've got something from that park place and it is pretty insane and leads to some other even crazier things. So listen to this. Alleged Dragon Age the Veilguard playtester reveals how ultra woke game really is beginning with non-binary Kunari companion. Now I want to make clear to you right now that in past Dragon Age video games there have been homosexual relationships that you could have bisexual relationships so when I hear that they're doing the same thing in this game it doesn't really affect me all that much because I know that that sort of thing has been present but the way that they're going about it these days fall perfectly in line with the agenda that the game's director is trying to push and the company appears to be pushing which is why I find its implementation agenda driven it just falls in place with everything else wrong that's apparently going on with this game now of course take whatever is said in this video based on this source with a grain of salt but also keep in mind that much bigger more important people have come out to express their disdain with these problems in the gaming industry including the DEI pushing from both gaming consultancy agencies aka Thomas Mahler expressing his disdain for that part of the industry as well as other developers that have come out anonymously to speak out against this stuff so let's read this together an alleged Dragon Age the Veilguard play tester broke his NDA to reveal how ultra woke the game is beginning with the fact that the Kunari companion Taj identified identifies as non-binary and what I understand about this part right here is that a Kunari companion within the universe of this Dragon Age video game literally introduces themselves by a real life modern day pronoun. This is something that American society has pushed on itself and the rest of the world and this is supposed to be in the game. Canonically of course this does not make sense but it's not the only thing. They also have top surgery scars that they're trying to push onto players through the customization options. Now this person in this video which I'm going to refer to while we're explaining this has allegedly verified who he is as a play tester to this youtuber Nura I believe it's Nura or Nuri or something or Nur it's N-U-H-R-E and this content creator got this scoop from this foreign play tester who apparently gave her receipts to prove who he was it says right here in the disclaimer that John not his real name was still under an NDA and for his safety decided to keep the spoilers to a minimum there's no way to verify the information he gave me is true until the game comes out so this is all alleged information until the game's release and she also reiterates this in the comments below her video saying that I would like to reiterate there's no way for me to confirm whether this information is true or not I can only trust what I saw with my own eyes and if he forged all those emails just to tell me this information then he might be clinically insane there were dozens upon dozens of emails so he sent her a bunch of emails confirming dates and times showing that he play tested the game over a long period of time and and I would like to agree with her in saying that based on what she has seen, he put a lot of work into this. And if he's lying, then it really seems unnecessary to go to these lengths to try and push this kind of a lie. But again, take it with a grain of salt as we go through this. So that park place breaks it down, saying that he shared his info with YouTuber Nura and began with the Kunari companion Taj. He stated, she told me that I am a non-binary person. So that's what the character said to him. How the heck that a fantasy game in Thetis have the word non non-binary now again this guy's English is not perfect he's a foreign play tester so this conversation does move along a little bit slowly so just expect his English to be kind of broken here she said that I don't like men and I don't like women I identify myself as non-binary 
just like that. From there, he discussed romance options available in the game and implied that they are gender locked. So I guess what they're doing differently this time is that depending on if you're a boy or a girl in this game, you will specifically like either boys or girls unless you identify as homosexual. But if you identify as non-binary, you automatically get to be in a relationship with all of the characters if you so choose. Now we know what the non-binary thing being added to this game probably means based on the director of the game who we will touch upon in just a few moments but regarding the pronouns he detailed of course there are pronouns they shove it in your throat just like starfield same thing so he says that they just pop it right in your face hoping that you will just swallow the slop and accept it for what it is and as for the game story he described it as baffling so he goes on to say that the writing is pretty abysmal in this game and that the ending of the game will anger a lot of people especially the ones who were following the dragon age game since before it was changed from the name Dreadwolf, so the game was supposed to heavily revolve around the character Solus, but apparently he's being put on the back burner in some ways, and that the story does not have very many consequential choices. So these choices that you make in the game don't have that big of an effect on the ultimate ending once you finally beat the title. Your choices are very limited to apparently only either saving or ending the life of Solus by the end of the game, and these choices are a result of you siding with certain factions in the game as well well, but their choices are very limited in scope and don't have that big of an effect on the overall world or the story or the characters. He says that if you have a good relationship with veil jumpers, they will help you out and you can pursue the ending on that front. If you do this, it will go this way, but it's all based on whether you can redeem Solus or you're going to end him and that's it. And that is really disappointing, but it is to be expected when you have a bunch of creative talent leaving your company and being replaced by diversity hires, which appears to be heavily the case with this game. I mean, Dragon Age of the Veil Guard looks like a complete overhaul of what it was supposed to be and in the worst ways possible. As far as how the Inquisitor affects the game, so this is the character from the previous game, he shared basically doesn't do anything. He's just going to give you a consultation of how to defeat the Elven God because he got help in the Inquisition. And this is something you see with a lot of characters in the game based on this accusation from this playtester, is that a lot of the characters you knew have been put strictly in advisor positions people that you just refer to once in a while but no actual involvement in the gameplay itself also keep in mind that you cannot control your companions in this game and that has been a staple from previous dragon age games all i see after watching everything about the development of this game is bioware gutting this title of all of its most famous and most engaging features it's just ripping what made dragon age dragon age out of dragon age he says that the game's going to be an s show that the story is going to be an S show. The people are going to despise it. He says that Rook, the character, he's just a guy. He's of no significant importance. So the person that you're supposed to play doesn't even have an important role in the story. He's just some dude that these guys picked up in a bar. And you can take that as what you will. Not everybody cares that they star as a bar patron because in an RPG, you can ultimately choose whatever you want to do. But others do share a concern with the main character having basically no relevance to this universe, but just being picked on a whim. But the frustrations of this playtester are not merely limited to the experience he had within the game, but by something that is actually common in this industry. These studio heads and these game developers ignoring all of the feedback that their playtesters and their customers give them. What's so funny about that is that that is usually the motivator for people within the industry to start speaking out in public or to give information as insiders to other content creators to talk about it on social media because their concerns are not being met with actual responses by these people. They're often ignored, or these people are given outright verbal refusals by these developers saying, we cannot pass this information on to our people because you're going in way too hard. You're not toxically positive about this game enough. You're not being overtly supportive like all of the other people that have enabled this game to exist. Because he goes on to state here that he shared his feedback with these people and they ignored him, how his feedback was not even passed along to developers at Bioware. While recalling an interaction with his manager, he said, how about I give you very comprehensive feedback so you can give it to the devs and that came from a Dragon Age fan. He said, yes, I would like to do that, but no promises. So he sent the information to him and I assume that it was a form that said, hey, this character is doing this wrong. I don't like this character. I don't like this, the gameplay, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote it down there because he said, hey, you need to write it down in our computer 
computers, you cannot write it down on your personal computer. And so he wrote it there and everything. He showed it to him. And the guy looked at it and he said, this is very good. Yeah, amazing feedback. Wonderful. Unfortunately, I can't send it to them. Now, how crazy is that? What is the point? of making this guy go through all of that trouble, writing all of that feedback, just so you can tell him to his face that you can't send it to those people for feedback. What's the point in even telling him that he can do it then? He said that when he asked him what the reason was, the guy responded, this is very good feedback, but I cannot because he was going in. Like every single character, he was going in too hard on these guys' game. I even told them that what is non-binary in that universe? How the heck this world travel through time and space and what he's referring to is a real life social problem being injected into this game it doesn't make any sense from there he also discussed other problems like certain poc characters being given huge titles that you had to work really hard to get in previous games but apparently in this game these characters have them like gray wardens in training who will have a lot of significance a lot of power and influence in this game despite not actually being 100 percent implemented into the gray wardens among other issues that dragon age fans will have a problem with when these people express that they have a problem with these things they are often met with ignorance but other times they are met with abject cruelty hatred and insultry and we will be taking a look at that right after his final statement in which he described that he thinks the game is so bad that it will be the end of bioware when i play tested it i told myself and my friend that this is the end this is the end for bioware this is where bioware they say ea will basically pull the plug and the only way that i could see that happen is if this game completely bombs. Now, I know that they have not released a truly interesting title in a good number of years, so they probably are hoping that this game will make some serious bank, but time will tell if that is the case or not. But we've got to get to this wonderful rhetoric being pushed out to people. But again, I would like to point out to you guys, Nura's channel, if you want to follow this person or subscribe to this person, please do so as I have done just now. Because there's always a chance she could get some more insider information, and I'm sure people want to keep track of that and of course before we get to the wonderful things being said to innocent gamers everywhere i would like to remind you all who the director of this game is and why so many people are concerned about the direction this title is taking i said a while back that this is the director of dragon age the veil guard are things starting to make more sense to you now now this is corin bush who is actually a guy but making himself look like a woman being a game director is about being a steward for the vision that we as a team have defined it's a role where I have a high level view of everything as it's coming together and can steer the project as it does. But ultimately, it's about empowering people to work together to create a cohesive experience for the player. Now, on the surface, that does sound all good and dandy until you actually start to dig into things, which is actually the usual when you think critically. As a queer trans woman, he says, even though it says she says, I have a perspective on the games that not everyone has. Dragon Age has long been a place where LGBTQIA plus folks can see people like themselves represented respectfully. It's inherently very queer. So, of course, that means that Corin Bush has to push LGBTQIA plus ideas in this game hardcore, and that appears to align with what this playtester has been saying. But he goes on to say, and it's such a rare thing for marginalized communities to have representation where we feel proud and powerful in how we are depicted. Now, keep in mind, this is on Corin Bush Bush's profile. This is on the front page, and this is him talking about Dragon Age. It says right here on Dragon Age, and this is when Corin Bush delves deeply into the trans and LGBTQI ideology nonsense. It's so deeply meaningful for so many. I often get emotional when I think about what it would have meant for a younger version of myself to see someone like her in a game, even though when he was a child, he was likely thinking about how he was just a boy. This is the kind of stuff that is taking precedence in game development development across the space, not just in Bioware, but Bioware is expressing openly that this is the kind of stuff they want to take priority over everything else, which would actually explain why they've gutted so many features that have been prominent in previous Dragon Age titles. They've upped the customization to include a lot of present day real world societal issues like chop surgery scars and cellulite in your legs. But of course, that is a subject for another time. The important thing is that Bioware 
is pushing this stuff and any play testers that bring this information to them, they are not willing to have a conversation about it, make fixes on it, or to even consider it or send that information to the people who can actually make these changes. They're demanding that you be quiet, accept the slot that they're trying to sell and say nothing negative about it, or else you will get responses from people like the one described in Grums's post. It gets much worse. Former and current Bioware Dragon Age writers mock gamers and poo-poo all over their feedback openly on social media claims Veilguard companions are to a one absolute smoke shows while gamers hate the new character designs. This shows how little they think of you. Don't buy games from developers who hate you, but it gets so much worse than what Grums is saying here. This guy went on a rant against normal everyday people that he doesn't even know, calling him names in the book that he likely doesn't even understand the definition of. He says the females aren't hot enough as he mocks normal people, yet because they've clued into the notion this is obviously incel behavior, and incel being a white person who cannot get a girlfriend, not sure why he uses that word, but a lot of them often do, they've swapped out unattractive for masculine and thus transgender because that's a framing which makes them seem political instead of porn-brained. But we all know what they mean. No, we all know what you mean, David Gator. What you mean is that when people want beautiful women in a video game, that means that they watch porn. So beauty is attributed to porn. The more beautiful that a woman is, the more porn-like they are, according to people like this guy, who surprisingly was a writer or former developer on Dragon Age titles in the past. That's actually insane to me, considering the way that he talks about people that he doesn't even know. And he says, and here I am, recalling how this has been a thing ever since some dude whined 10 years ago about Cassandra actually being a man, posting over and over and over about her giant jaw and posting phrenology pics to scientifically prove why his PP remains flaccid. So anybody that brings concerns to games like these are automatically attributed to incels and porn-brained individuals, according to this former Bioware writer. But he's not the only one. There are other writers who have been in complete support of these horrifying things that he has been saying. There are people right here in this very comment thread, including Patrick Weeks, who is also a writer in the gaming industry, which came after them complaining that none of the women in Dragon Age 2 were up to their standards either. <laughs> and then David continues to cry, saying Isabella being, and I quote, too exotic. So these people are just going on a rant against gamers. Oh, I absolutely remember those exact words from elements of our fandom to my eternal disgust. And Krista D. Ball, who I could not find on X because these people are communicating on Blue Sky, not Twitter. So it does look a lot like Twitter when you take a closer look, but it's really not Twitter. It's a completely alternative website for people who cannot handle conversations so that they can go wind together in their little echo chambers over on this corner of the internet instead. I remember that about Isabella, which is super weird given how some are using her as their example of good female design. Parentheses, I love Isabella. She was a hoot, but that portion of people did not believe this back then. Uh, okay then. The mantra of the Bioware fan is the game about to come out is garbage. Why didn't you make it exactly like the last game, which was perfect? Repeat this every game launch until the heat death of the universe. So they're calling everybody bigots for wanting Dragon Age to stay true to its roots. And anybody who is against this change is an automatic incel. It's really amazing to see people talk this way about people that they do not know. And it only gets worse from here. They keep going on. Rage baiters. Fans who will squee about parts they loved and be mostly fine with parts that weren't for them, but there are those toxic few who have never been happy in the present tense, and some seem to just want to hate Dragon Age for not being something it has never been. And this is the disconnect that so many people have a problem with. You people do not understand your fans or your customer base, you just don't understand them, and you continue to prove that you don't every single day with responses like these. All of this about the companions of Veilguard, who are too a one absolute smoke shows. Now, this writer in question, his name is Patrick Weeks. Now, on Blue Sky, he's named something else, but he's a writer. Repped by David Hale Smith, View Strictly Mine, They, Them, Rainbow Flag, amazing, account rarely updated, and that is very much true because he does not post on this website, even though he has a crap ton of followers. But in this day and age, these people are either on their alternative websites, whining about normal everyday gamers, or on X, they decide to go protected because that is exactly what happened here. After mocking and insulting gamers who 
made his career former lead writer on Dragon Age predictably goes protected and that is incredible to see so he can say whatever he wants but the moment that people start to push back he will disappear from the grid he will go into complete and total hiding because a conversation with normal everyday gamers that he apparently despises cannot happen if it is the last thing that he prevents which is why he's getting such hilarious responses from people ai emerald apple says they predictably act like roaches and run and hide when the light is cast upon them and cook says ah yes the typical insult gamers and then go protected and get ready to claim that it was because gamers were toxic towards him for no reason these people in the industry are so incredibly fragile that they cannot take even a lick or a morsel of criticism even if it's the most constructive middle of the road and kindly gestured criticism that they have ever received they deny it outright and even if they're not working for this company any longer they still have residual hatred for all of the people that criticize their past games and so when these current games are pushing ideologies up the wazoo creatively bankrupt and divorced of passion they will defend those games instead of the people who are finding problems with it which is likely why this person ended up doubling down after everything he's been observing the backlash that he's been getting and decided to start lashing out at grums after he saw that he was making the rounds on social media the former lead writer for dragon age doubles down on gamer hate calling everyone chuds and animals says that if you object to being called an incel you must be one so accept our slop accept everything that we're saying or you're a chud you're an incel you're a bigot the current veil guard writing staff supports him and his views as detailed in my past posts it's going to be an interesting launch for bioware as david gator says i'm in the process of finally shutting down my twitter account and yet i noticed a fresh spate of angry mentions there these more clueless than the last what could have ah I mentioned incels, so who should take notice but their sweaty-palmed, self-declared emotional support animals. So, this is amazing. He said some terrible things about people he didn't even know, and now he's trying to disappear. Before he goes, he says that he's going to delete his Twitter and leave social media, but not before he gets a few jabs in at the people that were criticizing him and the person that mentioned him. Because that's all that these people can do, and the only words that they have to use against people like us are buzzwords that have been done to death and lost all meaning including the word incel which i'm pretty sure half of these people who use it don't even understand the meaning of he goes on to say i guess this also means a fresh bunch of chuds wandering over here to make fresh accounts just to object so he claims that people were making accounts to log into blue sky just to communicate with him and he says the clever thing to do you'd think when incels are mentioned but you aren't named would be to not stand and identify yourself but identities are important i guess it's true so so his argument is, if you are called an incel and then you say, hey, that's not nice of you to call me an incel, how dare you? That reaffirms 100% that you are indeed an incel, just for questioning it, just for saying, no, I'm not an incel based on what you say. Because when all is said and done, canceling you is more important than the truth. And if you try to point the truth out to these people trying to cancel you, they will just say that you are confirming that you are these things they call you, simply because you don't believe yourself that you are these things. If you're not understanding yet, this this person is definitely off of his rocker and he's barking up the wrong side of the tree but that is the norm when it comes to people defending sweet baby ink dei ideology putting fun engaging and creative gameplay on the back burner and prioritizing everything that does not matter because they're either afraid of getting pushback from the wrong people or they truly believe in these things which is even more dangerous but the unfortunate reality is there's nothing much that we can do to change this the only thing that we we can change is how many people are aware of what's going on with Dragon Age the Veil Guard and with Bioware behind the scenes. When it comes to playtesting, the amount of feedback that you provide is limitedly shared. Your concerns are often ignored or put to the side for later deliberation, but that deliberation often does not come. And the only thing that you get in its place is disdain and mockery from the very people that are supposed to hear you and consider your thoughts about 
their products that they are trying to sell you. Indeed, this is a clown world, an upside down reality that we live in. And in order to navigate it, you have to start understanding that reaching these people with reason and logic is a gamble that is often not in your favor. And that is all I've got for you guys in this video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. And hey, if you're feeling ultra spicy, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing I've got going on. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Later. Meow, meow.